Hi everyone. Congratulations on completing your TOEFL reading diagnostic test. How did you do? Well, the average score for this TOEFL reading passage is seven out of 11 points. So if you got seven or higher, great. You're doing better than average. If you got lower than seven, don't worry. We'll go over the answers and come up with a way that you can easily and quickly answer the TOEFL questions. Let's go through the TOEFL reading diagnostic tests. The first question presented is a vocabulary question. I think vocabulary questions can be the easiest or the hardest on the TOEFL exam, depending if you know the words. So I think the best thing to do here is get a journal. And this journal, I write down every single word, not just the word in the highlighted sentence, but also the words, the word choices. I can group these together, and as you study, just take some time and just go through the vocabulary words. The better vocabulary, the easier it will be to answer the questions. So let's go through this one. So on here, um, we said the deserts, which already occupy approximately a fourth of the Earth's land surface, have in recent decades been increasing at alarming pace. The expansion of desert-like conditions into areas where they did not previously exist is called desertification. It has been estimated that an additional one-fourth of the Earth's land surface is threatened by this process. Okay. This one could be tricky because the words are very close together. So if you have a threat or if someone's threatening you, well, then you are in danger, right? So... This is going to be the, the answer here, is going to be endangered. If we look here, restricted means that you're prevented from doing something. You cannot do something. So restricted and prevented are very close to the same. So this, we can take these out. Okay, restricted and prevented. It's not stopping you. And then here is rejected, like to throw away or to disregard. So in this case, the best answer here is endangered. Again, if you struggled with this question, write down all of these words and go back and look them up and look at the definitions and see which one best matches. Okay, we'll go down to our next question. All right, according to paragraph three, the loss of natural vegetation has which of the following consequences for soil. So first, what they're saying was what we need to identify here, the loss of natural vegetation. So let's see if we can scan and find it. Okay, so the loss of natural vegetation here is the reduction of vegetation. Okay, so we have loss, reduction are similar. So even in areas that retain a soil cover, the reduction of vegetation typically results in the loss of the soil's ability to absorb ability to absorb substantial quantities of water. Okay. Now, so do we increase stony content? No, it's not going to be this one. Reduce water absorption, right? The loss of ability to absorb quantities of water. So I think this one's going to be correct here. Increase the number of spaces in the soil. No. And reduce water runoff. So we're not really talking about the water runoff. So the great thing about question number two, you can find it in the very first sentence. You don't have to worry about anything else except that very first sentence. All right, let's go down. Number three, according to paragraph five, in dry periods, border areas have difficulty. Okay, so border areas have difficulty with what? So let's take a look here. There's little doubt, however, that desertification in most areas results primarily from human activities rather than natural processes. Semi-arid lands bordering the desert areas. Okay, so here, bordering the desert areas, exist in a delicate ecological balance and are limited in their potential to adjust 
to increased environmental pressures. Okay, to adjust to increased environmental pressures. This is here. Well, let's take a look. Providing water for irrigating crops. Okay, I can take that one out, right? Attracting populations. They have difficulty attracting populations, no. Retaining their fertility. Not that one as well. So here we have adjust and adjusting. So we can match that. And then stresses is the same as environmental pressures. So the answer here is going to be A. According to paragraph six, which of the following is associated with raising crops? So what's our main topic here? Raising crops, correct. Which of the following is often associated with raising crops? Okay, over cultivation, over grazing, firewood gathering, over irrigation. The cultivation of crops has expanded into progressively drier regions as population densities have grown. These regions are especially likely to have periods of severe dryness so that crop failures are common. Since the raising of most crops, okay, here we go, I found it. Raising of most crops, here we go, this is the key. Necessitates the prior removal of the natural vegetation. Okay, so we have to remove natural vegetation. So lack of proper irrigation techniques? No, I'm gonna, not that one. Failure to plant crops suited in a particular area? No. Removal of original vegetation. So here we have natural vegetation. They say here, original vegetation. So remember, very common for the TOEFL to have uh, synonyms. Excessive use of dried animal waste? No. So the answer here for number four, C. Number five, we have another vocabulary question. If you don't know what devoid is, that's okay. One trick here is that D, anytime you have a word with D, devoid, devalue, decrease, that's going to be a negative. Okay, so let's just take a look here. What is a negative? Consisting of is not negative, uh, except for... I wouldn't take that here. Hidden by is close, but not necessarily negative just because it's hidden. So the answer here is going to be lacking in, meaning you don't have something. So if you don't have something, you could be devoid of a plan. So here, answer is going to be D. According to paragraph nine, the ground's absorption of excess water is a factor in desertification because, so here we have Y. So we have Grounds absorption of excess water causes desertification. Why? So major cause in desertification is soil salination resulting from over irrigation. Excess water from irrigation sinks down into the water table. If no drainage system exists, the water table rises, bringing dissolved salts to the surface. Okay, if there's too much water and it can't drain, well then salt from under the earth comes to the surface. Interfere with the irrigation of the land? No, it doesn't interfere. Limit the evaporation of water? Nope. Water does get evaporated. Requires more absorption of air by the soil? Nope. This one, bringing salts to the surface, right? So D is gonna be the answer. And if you see bringing salts to the surface, bringing dissolved salts to the surface, almost exactly the same. All right, number seven. Uh, number seven, I always take a moment and um, I, I really go through each one here, okay? So there's, number seven is hard, but there's some easy ways to approach it. The first part is looking at just the highlighted sentence. And one thing about the highlighted sentence is there's always two, sometimes three parts. So I always break them up first, right? So the extreme seriousness of desertification results from the vast areas of land and the tremendous numbers of people affected. Okay, desertification, we have vast areas of land and numbers of people affected. As well as, meaning, you know, we're just continuing, giving one more point, from the great difficulty of reversing or even slowing the process. So it's very serious because there's lots of land and people, but also 
it's difficult to, difficult to reverse it or slow the process. Desertification is a significant problem, correct, because it's so hard to reverse and affects large areas of land and that says people, that's gonna be correct here. Um, let's find out if you got the other ones, why the other ones are wrong. Slowing down the process of desertification is difficult because of population growth. It's not because of population growth, it's as well as, okay? So here we have, it's a significant problem because, and then we give the two reasons. This one saying slowing down the process is difficult because, no, it's out of order. So not B, the spread of deserts is considered a very serious problem that can be solved only. Uh, we're not talking about solving it, right? They don't mention here that, you know, we can, we can solve it. So C is out because of that. Desertification is extremely hard to reverse unless the population and here, again, we're not saying, oh, yes, it's hard to reverse unless. We're talking about it as well as, right? So it's, it's serious and as well as it's difficult to reverse the process. So the answer here is going to be A for that one. Ah, we have an inference question. So here are our inference question. What can be inferred from the passage? So this means that they don't actually give you the answer you have to infer it. Government will act quickly to control further desertification. I don't think that it mentions anything about the governments in here. The factors influencing desertification occur in cycles and will change in the future. I don't think it's gonna change. I think it just keeps getting worse is what the article said. And that being continued to get worse, desertification will continue to increase. So I believe this is the what they're inferring, right? It's very slow to stop. It's a very serious problem. Um, desertification will soon occur in all areas of the world. Well, if there's no desert, there's going to be no desertification. So here, the answer is going to be C. Here in number nine, we have this sentence. Where does it fit? This economic reliance on livestock in certain regions makes large tracts of land susceptible to overgrazing. Okay, so economic reliance, this is the key. This economic reliance, what economic reliance? Because they mentioned this, they have to mention it before, it has to come after. So what that means is we know that we're not going to start here with A. Right, because you wouldn't start with this economic reliance without mentioning it before. The raising of livestock is a major economic activity in semi-arid lands, where grasses generally are generally the dominant type of natural vegetation. Right, so raising of livestock is an economic activity. So this economic activity or reliance on livestock in certain regions makes large tracts of land susceptible to overgrazing. Okay, and now here, if we put it here, that makes sense, right? Because this talks about raising of livestock and the consequences of an excessive number of livestock grazing, overgrazing. So the answer here is gonna be B. This is the best part where this goes because this one connects to the raising of livestock and over grazing, they talk about the consequences here. So it's perfectly fit for B. So for the last question is the hardest question. And most people get this one or some of the answers incorrect. Basically, we need to choose three answers, okay, that express the most important ideas in the passage. So some, there's two ways they could be wrong. Some do not belong in the summary because they express ideas that are not presented in the passage or are minor details. So the best thing to do here is try and separate what is the main idea from a detail. And we'll go through each one. So number one, here we have many factors have contributed to the increase in desertification in recent decades. Okay, so let's go through each one. 
Growing human populations and the agricultural demands that come with such growth have upset the ecological balance in some areas and have led to the spread of deserts. Well, that's a pretty main topic, right? We talked about human population. We talked about agricultural demands. So A is going to be one of our choices here. Now, let's look at B. As periods of severe dryness have become more common, failures of a number of different crops have increased. Failures of a number of different crops? Well, the different crops is really not what we're talking about as far as desertification. That would be a detail. So we can block off B. B would not be a choice. It would be a, a main detail. And I don't even remember them mentioning the different types of crops. Excessive number of cattle and the need for firewood for fuel have reduced grasses and trees, leaving land unprotected and vulnerable. Well, that's true, right? We had the uh, overgrazing of cattle and the collection of firewood. So this is a main idea as well. I would check there. So now we have A and C, and we only need one more. Extensive irrigation with poor drainage brings salt to the surface of the soil, a process that reduces water and air absorption. Well, that's true. They did mention all the excess water uh, brings the salt to the surface. So that was a main idea here. So A, C, and D are all correct. Um, let's take a look at E and F. Animal dung enriches the soil by presiding nutrients. Well, that's not animal dung or animal poop is what that means doesn't really increase desertification. So E is going to be wrong. F, grasses are generally the dominant type of natural vegetation in semi-arid lands. Uh, that's not really talking about increase in desertification either. So again, with this question, main idea versus detail, and check if it answers uh, the the summary up here. So that's a quick overview of the TOEFL reading diagnostic test. If you need more help, uh, please click the link below. Uh, we have small group classes running every day and your first class is free. So come join us. I'd be happy to work with you and we can come up with a study plan so that you can prepare, practice, and pass the TOEFL reading diagnostic test.